World Rabies Day is September 28th. Joining me this morning with the details, Dr. Byron Moss from Ben Veterinary Clinic. Good morning. Good morning. So what is World Rabies Day? Why do we have this? World Rabies Day is, a, uh, is basically an awareness um, day to, um, to, to bring the public awareness of about what rabies is worldwide. Mm -hmm. um, here in Central Oregon, we don't have a very large problem with rabies, but uh, around the world, especially in Africa and Asia, um, rabies is a huge concern. One person dies every 10 minutes in, uh, on the globe from rabies, which is, is staggering. Um, yeah, it's it's a huge problem. So we kind of take it for granted and we come be, become complacent with it, in, especially in our community where the incidence is so low. Mm -hmm. I think everybody's heard of rabies. Oh, sure. But may not know exactly what it is. What is it exactly and how does it affect humans? Rabies is a, is a disease that affects the nervous system. So it, it comes in through, typically through bite wounds. There have been a few other cases where it came in through um, uh, another method, mostly like a, a, a transplant. Mm -hmm. um, um, but uh, it's transmitted through bite wounds from saliva. It goes into the central nervous system up through the nerve at the bite site and then replicates in the brain and then comes back down and is transmitted only through saliva. So what happens is that it causes damage to the nervous system and eventually kills the, the mammal. It's only a warm-blooded animal disease. Mm -hmm. is, is it fatal to humans? Oh, 100% fatal. So if you get exposed to it and you're not um, protected against it, so treated with some sort of immunoglobulin therapy, if that if through a bite wound, if the animal is rabid, it's 100% fatal. But it's 100% preventable exactly. through the vaccination programs. Right, right. We, by creating a buffer zone, with our, especially with our pets, we can actually prevent that disease. And so that's what happens and mostly in this country. We're down to just two or three cases a year of rabies now. Mm -hmm. um, so that's all done through aggressive vaccination programs. In Oregon, uh, dogs are required to be vaccinated at state law. Cats are required by, um, well actually it's county law in Multnomah County. I think that it's very important to vaccinate cats because they're the ones that are going to be the most susceptible to coming in contact with rabies, especially in Deschutes County. Mm -hmm. the, the incidence of rabies here, it, it goes through migratory bats. We've had two cases of migratory bats this year that have tested positive for rabies. And cats are the ones that are going to typically find those little guys, bring them into the household, and potentially, you, you know, somebody that's going to get pick up that bat and get exposed. Oh, wow. So there are risks here oh, yeah. in Central Oregon. Yeah, yeah. We tend to feel buffered, you know, feel very safe from this. Right. But it's that's really not the case. Exactly. It's very a little known disease. We don't think about it that much. Um, but, but definitely with, uh, with migratory bats, they travel mostly from the spring through fall. And the rest of the year, they hibernate. They're, they're out catching insects. Mm -hmm. If you find a bat during the day, um, on the ground, it assumed that that bat is actually sick. Um, if you can, you know, if somebody, the best thing to do is to not to touch it. Um, but if there's, uh, you know, if it's been co in contact with a, a cat or a dog or certainly a person, get that back in a bat in a plastic bag and have it tested. It should be assumed that that bat is actually positive unless it can be actually shown to be negative. Okay. So I will be telling my kids, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't, don't poke anything, you right. know, that you find, don't touch it, leave it alone and, and let me know. How do you test it? The, the testing is done by actually sending in brain tissue. So an animal that needs to be tested it has to be generally euthanized and send in brain tissue. Um, bats, the same thing. Mm -hmm. You actually send in the whole bat and actually analyze the central nervous system. Uh, animals that are exposed, if they're vaccinated, they should be quarantined uh, for a certain period of time to make sure that they're, they're okay. Unvaccinated animals, um, uh, they say that the, you should quarantine for them for at least six months or euthanasia because if they're not vaccinated, there's a huge risk that they, they could come down with the disease. So what do you do if you are if you are bitten by a cat or a dog? Yeah, it's um, or a bat. Or a bat, um, yeah. Okay, so if you get exposed uh, to a cat or dog, um, the immediate thing to do is to you know clean the wound, report it to your healthcare provider, um, and find out if that animal has been vaccinated for rabies. If and then in state, uh, Oregon state law requires that those animals need to be quarantined for at least 10 days. Mm -hmm. And that can be done um, with home quarantine or at a shelter or at a vet clinic. Um, and that 10-day waiting period is to make sure that those animals don't actually then show some signs of, of rabies or central nervous system disease. If that happens, then the next step is euthanasia and test that animal. Okay, and then obviously the human would have to go through right, the, the, right. the rabies shots as well. Um, but there are low cost vaccination or clinics. Yeah. yeah, we just actually had one at the Ben's Bay Neuter Clinic. Um, so that one just ended. Um, there's some coming up uh, in October. Mm -hmm. We're gonna be having one uh, through the Ben Vet Clinic at uh, Pet Expo. Um, where we're gonna have low cost vaccinations and we're gonna have something coming up specifically on the 28th. 
uh, to actually promote the and get as many animals vaccinated as possible. And again, that is September 28th. And if we could put up that website one more time, it is uh, www.worldrabiesday.org. So www.worldrabiesday.org. And then locally here, you can contact uh, Dr. Moss and the Bend Veterinary Clinic at bendveterinaryclinic.com and then 541-382-0741. So it was great to see you this morning. It was great to see you too. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.